What is up? What is going on, Dave at SVA Baseball Card Collectors? Another weekend is over, and another Monday beginning. Yay. So, as usual, I'm driving off to work. This podcast is geared towards people like me. The mid-30 year crisis, and they want to start collecting baseball cards, or any sports cards. So I try to navigate my way and try to help you guys along with it. And if not, oh, well, I really don't care. I just like to listen to myself talk. So, what happened this weekend? The Yankees took three out of four of the Astros. Very, very happy. Still not happy. I wish we would have beaten Verlander and lost to some other schmuck. But uh, we can't have it all. So, I'm, I'm happy with three games out of four against the Astros. We whooped them pretty good. Um, and we are, I believe, at full strength now. Aaron Judge is now back into the fold. I know Hicks got hurt for a little bit, but he always gets hurt, so I'm glad we signed him for seven years. That was a really really smart deal. Um, But yeah, I'm happy about that. Mets blew a late lead again yesterday, and managers started yelling at the reporters, which was, that makes sense. Because they're the ones who blow it time and time and time and time. Again. But Pete Alonso was already beating the rookie record, home run record for the Mets. I think it was 27. This guy's a beast. Hopefully he doesn't beat my Aaron Judge's record because he just got it. Jerk. But it is what it is. He is really good. He is doing really well. Um, yeah, so on the baseball card front, I actually went to a baseball card shop on Saturday. And to be honest with you, I really wasn't feeling even going to it, but it was close by to my house. And so I went in and I just was like meandering. And now they have their box of cards where they have like the two, two three dollar cards of autos and things like that. And I just rifled through with them very briefly, maybe five, 10 seconds. And I just was like, I just don't want to do this. I am in no mood to flip around to find some cards that of guys that I don't know and, and really what that's what it is it's just like I don't know these people I don't know and I'm not willing to learn about these old guys these older guys who are prospects and they're still meandering around in the majors or maybe not even there anymore and that, that's what I typically do I'll buy guys and they're not even in the league anymore so um, I didn't want to do that plus I didn't feel like spending a hundred dollars on a box of cards I just wasn't, you know, I just, I don't know, I just wasn't. And the top, and, and the prices have started to go up and compared to eBay prices. And what's up with that? I don't want to pay eBay prices. But um, I always look for Tops Update, 2018 Tops Update. I just really like the set. I don't know why. Um, I don't like the commons or anything like that, but I just, I like the set. So I look for that and the jumbo. I bet you was cheaper than it was on eBay. I bet you they are cheaper than eBay, but they're not as cheap as what I'm thinking in my head. And so, I don't remember what it was. It wasn't 160, 180, but they were charging. I'm not too sure. I just, to me, I didn't want to spend $200 on a box of cards. That's what it came down to. I just didn't want to do it. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, we'll start on a couple more auctions. But this time I wasn't feverently like with like 20 seconds left to go shaking uncontrollably, you know, controllably by the phone, worried that I'm going to lose out on this card and should I bid higher. I just set my number and that was it. It was another Kyle Tucker. It was the same card I had and it was bid at three bucks. It was pretty low and then it went from three all the way to 19. Mine was 18 something and I actually raised it to 18 something, 18, 50, whatever. I don't know what I do. So. I got annoyed again because I was like, ah, it just so happens one dollar more than me. So there was just me and this other guy bidding. That's basically what it came down to. I just get annoyed because I always, now I think everything is shill bidding and it's somebody else bidding it and I, I get all annoyed. I thought I had a good deal for three bucks. I didn't think it would go up that much in a minute. But I already have one, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I just wanted to collect more and more because um, 
because, just because, I just want it. That's it. And uh, my other flip game, I was happy because I finally sold a Commodore 64 monitor. I've had these, I've had two of these monitors for a really long time. I sold one maybe four or five months ago. Hold on one sec. And this one I sold. Finally, I've had this over a year sitting there doing nothing. Um, and that's one of the things about electronics, especially vintage electronics. Um, sometimes they sit. So, yeah, these monitors do sell, but for some reason, mine, they just sat. And I wasn't asking for crazy prices either. Um, they just sat. And I, I mean, I made a killing off of it, but. It stayed in my house for a year. I'm looking at it right now. I got a box. So I bought it maybe for 20 bucks, 25 bucks maybe. It was a Commodore 64 monitor. Sold it for $140 and charged 50 bucks for shipping. It'll probably be 30 bucks for, for shipping. So I'll probably make 10 to 15 bucks. You also got to realize with this crap, it takes time to wrap this up. Make sure that it doesn't move. Make sure the screen's not going to crack when you send it over. It, it, it's more to it. So it, it takes time. So when they go shipping and handling, this will take me 20 minutes to do. Now, what do you, I don't. You know, I don't go, well, I know this is going to take me 20 minutes, so I'm going to charge X amount of dollars. But I just don't feel bad overcharging people for shipping because nine times out of ten, it's going to take me a while to pack this up. Sometimes I might not even have the stuff to, to pack this. You know, I, styrofoam or the bubble wrap or, or things like that. So I got to go out and get it. Um, but still, it's a hell of a deal. And, and that's what I was obsessed with, and that's what I really loved about it was the big flips. Because I would make a hundred, two hundred dollars each flip, but it was so time-consuming, and it was just. And you don't find these deals all the time, but it's time-consuming, and you have to test. And sometimes you don't have all the stuff to test, so I don't have to do that with baseball cards. You just have to look at it, and just look. But um, now. I've been looking for Jordan Alvarez, and this is the best time to buy him because he's so hot right now, and he is hitting a ton of home runs, and nobody collects those guys. They just go, eh. So, I'm joking. Everyone's collecting them. Don't waste your time buying them now. Or maybe buy them now and just wait because this guy is he's a big hitter, big time hitter, and he's going to be everything. I've said it before. On all the updates, that's what everybody's going to want. His rookie card. I think it might be just as much or more than Vladimir Guerrero. Um, but he, he's, he's working it. So, there's that. And now I need to start learning about basketball. Yeah, I, I, it's a, a weird segue. Zion coming out. I would like to take advantage of this situation because if he does anything or if he becomes this hot commodity or becomes the next big thing even though his prices are insane will be insane starting off it's just going to get worse later on if he becomes that star it's going to be a lot more so I don't know if it's buying a box of cards and looking for a Zion auto I don't I really don't, because just like baseball, it seems like it's the roll of the dice. And I'm not too sure which one's the big, you know, the best one. I know Panini Prism. I know that one. Um, I heard someone say National Treasures. I don't know. I really don't. So I got to get my learn on. And I can't learn from, like, I see LeBron, but a lot of those card makers aren't around anymore, I don't think. So it doesn't really line up so I, I gotta I gotta do my my due diligence as they say I have to learn about basketball and because I think it is important like I said before to be in other sports because you want to be buying at the you know 
you want to be buying football now because football, no one's thinking about football. Everyone's thinking about baseball. Um, you want to buy basketball. I think later on when football starts, I think you want to buy basketball cards because no one gives a crap about basketball because free agency. Right now, free agency is going to be coming in, so basketball is still going to be in the news. I think it's still going to be popular. So I think it's just important to... Diversification is important. Not having one's eggs all in one basket. But the richest people do. They put all their eggs in one basket and look at them. But besides the point, <laughs> just another thing to think about. Um, another thing, I've been changing my mind with regards to starting collecting and doing research on cars and not just buying everything willy-nilly. You may not want to buy a box per se, but maybe buy, if you can, packs of cards. Just so you get an idea of what the cards look like. And if you like them, if you like the inserts, if you like whatever. Because had I not bought a lot of different cards, I wouldn't have known what I liked and wouldn't and didn't like. I wouldn't have known that I like heritage. Um, I wouldn't have known that I don't like Topps Chrome as much because it's a Fugazi Bauman Chrome. Um, and I just wouldn't have known. I would have thought Topps, you know, not to get the update, but all the rookies are in the updates. I wouldn't have thought that. I would have just thought, oh, I'm, I missed out on everything. Uh, to me, the update is like the traded cards. And most of those cards, every once in a while, I get one guy that's good. But the Traded Series, nobody really collected the Traded Series. It was just silly cards. They were a bunch of small little box of cards. So, try. Just try stuff. Buy some things here and there. Um, so, you get to feel you like them, you don't like them. And that's the best way you're going to learn. Yeah, you can watch YouTube as well. And that's also a really good place to learn. And I would highly suggest that as well, because maybe you don't even have to buy cards. You look at you look at a YouTube video and go, no, those look like crap. I know I don't like those. But sometimes you just need the feel of them. So it's not bad to buy a pack or two of a card and uh, just check it out. Um, I am at my job, SVA Baseball Card Collectors. That's the Facebook group, SVA BB Collectors. I think that's the Flick Chat. Um, if you go on my YouTube channel which is uh, all the same thing, SVA Baseball Card Collectors. There'll be a link there for that, for my Flick Chat. Also in the Facebook group, I have a post there as well. Oh, what else do I got? Oh, svacardcollectors.com. I will be posting my latest article, which will just be a synopsis of the just what's coming out in July, the sets that are coming out, and around the range of what a box will cost. So you guys know what to do. Buy some cards and go broke, people. Later.